coaches, this is Jason Honstadt with ProStyleSpreadOffense.com and CoachingOffense.com. And I wanted to break down some uh, football strategies from Army. Now, Army runs the Flexbone Triple Option. And the reason it's called that, let's do a little football history lesson here. I, I searched Google just so I was correct in this. But if you went back in the ages of football, um, one of the most popular offenses what used to be the wishbone. And so that meant that this these two wing players that are now flexed from the bone used to be back here. Now, they used to have running back, running back, running back. And that formation right there with the quarterback, those one, two, three, four players, used to form what looked like a wishbone shape. All right? So um, that style of football has come and gone, although there's still a few teams that will run the wishbone. You probably see it in high school more often than anywhere else. But I would love it if a college team brought back the wishbone. I don't think defenses would know what the heck to do with it. Um, anyway, now they're flexed over here, and it's mainly just for a little more flexibility. When you're three running backs in the backfield here, you're not really pass threats. You're just run threats. Anybody can get the ball, so it can be confusing, but you don't have to worry about these guys defending these guys for pass. They can pretty much walk all the way up here and just um, do their best to um, stuff the run. So by going into the flex bone now, it's possible that this quarterback could take the snap and he could release on a route here, here, wherever, and this guy could do the same. And these guys would have to defend if they run straight downfield. They would have to have that deep coverage to prevent an easy touchdown pass. So the flex bone advantages are pretty significant over the wishbone, which is why it's not run um, to the extent that it is anymore, especially at the college level where you do, even though Army does not throw the ball, but maybe like some games, like I think they <laughs> one game they threw it two times this past season. Um, maybe it was more than that, but it was less than 10. I know that. Anyway, um, you still have to be in position to defend it. And that's part of the reason for this formation is to force them to be in a defense that defends the pass to some extent. And as long as these guys stay disciplined in defending the pass, Army has the advantage in their run game. So, um, you might say teams that only run the ball all the time are not a passing threat. I would argue counter to that. They are a passing threat, and that's how they can run the ball uh, so often or every single time. And defenses that allow them to run it so many times are very disciplined defenses in their pass defense. They might get run over, they might lose, but that's just the way the game is played. All right, so let's break down some Army football here. This play right here, this is a trap. Now, I'll admit I looked this play over really closely before I started this breakdown so I could understand what they're doing. And it is not easy to always see what they're doing. So this left guard here is going to pull, and he's going to kick out this defensive tackle right here. Now, these three bodies right here, he uh, center's going to block back. Guard is blocking back on this linebacker and tackle is blocking down inside on this linebacker right here. So we have these three are taking care of these three right here. That leaves these two out here. So this tackle is going to be kicked out by this um, guard on the back side here. And it's very interesting. Notice how the ball in the line of scrimmage is on um, the 23. But you <laughs> look at these guards and tackles. And they are on the 22-yard line with their hand and head placement. They are as far back as they possibly can be. The quarterback is up tight under center. And you've got your um, fullback at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 feet or at 5 yards. Hand is around 4. That's important when you're coaching this offense that you get this spacing very accurate. And your wings are just off the line of scrimmage outside those tackles. All right, and then you have your uh, 
split ends out wide here, outside the numbers, very wide. Usually in this in this Army offense, you want those split ends out wide. When I coached, I used to coach the wide receivers, and we basically had um, one play we ran more than anything else. That was the stock block. Stock block or backside block or inside run block, crack block. Um, we had about 10 different ways we could block on the perimeter, um, uh, which was our assignment. Um, that was fun coaching wide receivers to block every day. They didn't always love that. So this play right here, the guard's going to pull. Now notice how he's so far off, he literally does not have to drop back. Most coaches teach that pull is, all right, you got to drop step and then pull. Now if your guy's up on the line of scrimmage, you do have to drop step. Well, he's so far back, and they're going to get so much push on the front side of the line right here that he literally only has to pivot and start heading at his upward angle, which is the correct angle when you are trapping or pulling and kicking out a defender. You want to be going upward into the line of scrimmage. In fact, you want to be so upward into the line of scrimmage that it really looks like, it almost looks like he's leading a lead blocker there, but he's not. He's trap blocking because these defenders are all going to crash down inside. When these when these offensive linemen, um, the right guard and the right tackle, um, when they block down, their responsibility is to squeeze that hole shut. If he stays out here, then it's going to be easy picking for that guard to kick him out, and there will be a huge hole right here for the running back to run through. Um, Navy does this pretty well. You've got that tackle crashing down hard, all right, squeezing down very tight, making it very difficult for this guard to kick him out right there. See how his helmet just makes contact um, with the outside shoulder, and he's trying to get to that inside shoulder is what his coach is telling him to because if he can get to that inside shoulder of that tackle and kick him out, so this was a good job by the tackle. He really squeezed that hole down. All right, but all of that mess kind of creates a little stalemate right here at the line of scrimmage. And that guard blocking out gets enough momentum that the fullback getting the ball and a full head of steam can still get two yards. Now that is football right there. So those of you football purists, you will probably love this breakdown right here. Now what are these other backside guys doing here? Well, backside tackle right here. He's got to make sure that this backside tackle doesn't shoot in behind the line of scrimmage and um, make the play. So he's going to cut off. See, he's got to watch this cutoff block here. He's got a, kind of a long ways to go. So he's got to take a really good angle inside here, get to that alignment, two steps, right, left, and he's down and he's diving for his inside thigh board there because there's no way this defensive tackle can get through 74's, in, 74's shoulder pad when he's dipping and ripping into his inside thigh board. He's trying to keep his leg back there, but there's nowhere to go. Look at this. This is beautiful right at the end there. Boom. All right. You see him on the ground there, basically, defensive tackle. He's not making the play. Not late at all. All right, so that shuts down the backside end. You've got the backside wing is also trying to come in real tight and help out, cut off any other defender backside. So this play hits super tight. This is a great example of a uh, trap in this offensive system. Quarterback, he's not reading anybody, just opening up, handing the ball off, and then he's going to reverse pivot because they're going to run it. I guarantee in their game plan, they have a trap option where um, where when these guys, uh, if, if this happens, if he starts following or squeezing so tight and, not, and they don't have somebody accounting for the quarterback or the pitch back, then he will bring it out and either keep it so in a trap option, if this guy doesn't, if nobody's picking up the quarterback, and that's his job, 
All right, he saw the ball handed off, so he jumped off. But if the coaches see that that tackle is not picking up his man, the quarterback right here, that would not be the tackle. That would be the defensive end. My apologies, coaches. Then they're going to run trap option next or trap keep, and the quarterback would just keep it on up the outside for a big gain. So I've just spent I don't know how much time breaking down this one play, this one play for Army right here. So if you think this offense is simple, you are vastly mistaken. But that's what I love about it. So it's incredibly complex. If you, but I will say this: um, in my experience coaching on a team back in college uh, or after college. It is a different thing to coach the receivers from coaching the line. You'll sit, we would sit in meetings and we would talk offensive line, running back, quarterback stuff. These uh, 10 guys right here, we'd talk these 10 guys stuff or split them out here four days. And I'm sitting out here thinking, I got a stock block. I got a stock block. Uh, this guy's got a cutoff block. This guy, and this would go on for hours, play after play after play. Now, it was tough for me to stay focused, but I did my best, so hopefully I've got some good stuff for you. Um, this next play, we got a motion. So, And notice here, this is an unbalanced formation. Second play of the game, and I'm, I'm going to stop after this play because I don't want to go on forever. Um, I want to save some good stuff for later on uh, when I do some other breakdowns um, for coaches that... Um, are interested in hearing more. Uh, but we have an unbalanced formation here. Tight end, or is that the tackle? That's a tackle. Looks like a tackle over. Hard to tell because their tight ends are... They're going to sub a tight end in here. This is actually tight end number 49. So their tight end is as big as a tackle. So literally you've got one, two, three tackles in the game, even though he's tight end number. Uh, two guards and... Your center. All right, you get your uh, back coming across the formation, and quarterback reverse pivots out, and he's going to hand the ball off in what looks to me what kind of a play is this here? Let me look at the line. So I did not study this one. They are just doing this is a zone, zone blocking to the left. So it's a fake, looks like a fake, I would I would call this their version of a draw. So it looks like he's going to pass right there. You're getting a good pass read, line is solid, zone block. They're going to look to kick kick the guy um, even to this, even the sense of this running back releasing up field here. And then at the last second... It is a draw, which turns into um, kind of a zone run. Not terribly successful, but to a defense that's scouting this, they're going to be thinking pass, 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 and it at least gets those might get those defensive linemen trying to swim around and open up a hole, or the linebackers dropping. Do linebackers drop? Nope. I think this might be a little bit early in the game to call it a. a uh, a play action, but it is second and long, or not a play action, but a a, a a draw play. But he makes, he gets a yard or two. All right, so now we've got third and six. Gotten two yards each play. Okay, quick shift. So now that we're showing, all right, looks like a, tighter formation here they're going to shift that receiver outside and he's going to go on the line let's see if notice this on the other side yep i see it right there so we have our one two three four five six seven men on the line he's going to step off while he goes on the line this is going to this is a balanced formation right now because you have three on the line over here three on the line over here but they're going to go unbalanced simply by splitting their split end out, moving them on the line, and backing off the split end over here. Now this should give you an extra gap advantage 
to the play side. So let's see what they do with it. All right, this is an option. All right, triple option right here because the quarterback is either going to give, keep, or pitch, which is what he does. And if it weren't for an outstanding open field tackle by number six there, this would have been a first down. Big play, and that is tough. That will not happen all game long where he comes from the backside and makes an open field tackle. The defense is pressing in man, so the perimeter is the place to get the ball, which a quarterback does a nice job of reading that. Let's see what his read is here. So here's his read. So this is the quarterback is in a pistol alignment here. That's what's new also. Quarterback is back up to four yards. So check out Rick Stewart's Pistol Wing T if you want to learn how to run some pistol formation runs out of uh, the wing T, although this is not the wing T. All right, so he's reading. This is a, I would call this a midline because the pistol back is ever so slightly. See his left foot is splitting the center of the quarterback, but he's coming very tight right down the middle, hence midline option. These te um, teams like Army have two basic kinds of options, and they'll heavily favor one, which is probably the midline option. Um, it's the easier of the one, easier of the two options to perfect, and it's the most effective in my opinion as well. So midline means that that first running back is going to be coming straight up the center of, straight up the gut of the offense. Now they're in an odd front here, so a nose and two tackles. So this would be your basic three, two or five two, which is your odd front. So he's going to look that play side a gap. And the quarterback's reading this tackle right here because he's unblocked. Guards going inside. We should have a double to the backside right here. And these guys each picking up their backside man. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. And the defensive tackle does a good job. His man releases inside. He gets hands on, although it's very difficult because he's got his back to him and dipping and ripping through. Squeezes the hole down. His job is to tackle that running back every single play. He gets it done. Quarterback then is option number two. Can he, um, will he have running room outside of this tackle right here? So he hands it off out of the pistol. There is not much option for running room there, so... Um, to be honest with you, I think what they've done with this is they have turned this into a midline with a wide pitch option. So if he is not there and the quarterback sprints outside, there's definitely not a hole in here. Then he's going to be taking it outside and pitching it quickly and getting the ball into the hands of his running back, who is the best chance of making a play right there. So that's a midline option, and you can see they don't get the first down, but man, oh man, what what an impressive three plays by Army and Navy. Um, Navy did a pretty good job stopping them there. Technique-wise, tough on the inside. Navy guys are fired up. I don't blame them. It's a punt, shield punt. Check out Chris Ford's shield punt. He knows how to um, set that up for you. Just Google it if you're interested. All right, coaches, that's all I've got for you today. I am going to stop the uh, breakdown right now. This has been a lot of fun. Um, ooh, unbalanced punt, unbalanced shield punt. Check that out, coaches, right there. You got three, four over here, one, two down here, three right here. All right, just some more cool stuff Army is always doing. They did not... Um, they did not leave anything, make anything obvious or simple for Navy.